Hey adventurers, right now we are uh, out here in the front kind of side yard uh, because I've got to drain the brine off of the turkey, so let me go get the cooler. I grabbed a towel because it's always wise to have a towel. Here you can see turkey sitting in nice icy water. And we've got this sitting on an incline, so when we pop open our vent here, it should drain. Now the problem is, or the challenge is going to be, we've got a lot of uh, spices and stuff in there. So, <clears throat> all spice berries that sort of thing might uh, end up clogging our vent drain here mm -hmm. we'll do just right hand I guess <coughs> yep, there's a piece of uh, that's a that's a piece of candy ginger <coughs> Ooh, that's cold <coughs> luckily it's not too cold outside today Looks like the candy ginger is going to be the, the sinking stuff that's going to get stuck in that the most. At a certain point, it's going to become just most advantageous to tilt the whole thing up, lift your lid. This towel is going to go straight into the washing machine. It's got turkey juice on it, and turkey juice is gross. Poultry juice. Just want to prevent putting your whole turkey on the ground when you do this. But clearly, you want to get rid of your ice. You don't need to keep any of it. And they're to birdie. Nice and brine. Okay, so for sake of ease and making sure that we don't uh, accidentally drop this on the ground, lose all our nice sanitation. Let's drain a little bit more. Close that. And that. Okay, now, carry the phone on the tripod into the kitchen, yeah, into the garage and the mudroom. Just talking to myself while I'm streaming. And see if we can set up, that's probably a bad place for it, let's see, we'll do here. So we can see everything, cool. getting it out of the cooler and into your um, your sink without making a huge mess. So you want to get your cooler pretty close to the sink. I'm going to wash my hands in the that part doesn't really matter. I'm going to get the sink nice and sanitized. So we've got to rinse the bird first. Real quick. It doesn't take too much, but we do. Nice. Dawn's 
soap here. It's hot water. I'm going to rub this down. Rinse this out, make sure you don't have any soap. I'll leave that running for now. Alright, turkey. Bird bird. Let it drip for a second over your cooler. And then transfer to the sink. Okay. The main goal here, we want to make sure we're getting all of our solids off of it. So if you've got bay leaves and make sure your water's not too hot, you don't want to cook the skin. Peppercorns and allspice berries, we want them to get rid of, get those out of the turkey itself. Alright, now we're going to dry the turkey. On a clean towel, you can go and get that. Brown's recipe calls for doing this with uh, paper towels, probably to avoid fuzzies and lint and that sort of thing. This is a really, really freshly washed towel. No lint or fuzzies or anything coming from this. And I'm a millennial, so I'm killing the paper towel industry, remember? Right, so I'm let that drain. Set this in the pan. I'm also a very poor millennial. I don't have a nice roasting pan with a rack or anything like that. But that's the point is I'm kind of doing this like anybody would who's got kind of real common kitchen stuff. Don't necessarily have a huge roasting rack with a fancy or a roasting pan with a fancy rack in it or anything. Um, I'll show you, you can, you can still roast a turkey and have it come out really wonderfully, especially after, after being brined. All right, so breast backed up. Finish drying this off. Before I rub it down, we're going to stuff it. And real quick, we're going to talk about stuffing. I'm not doing stuffing in the bread in traditional sense because it's actually pretty, uh, pretty, pretty bad for your bird. I'm going to dry your bird out while you're cooking. So let's see if we can fix our angle so we're not just staring at my crotch. Maybe, maybe we can look at the counter a little bit while I'm chopping up stuff. Nope. Guess not. Let's see. This is first time attempting something like Whitney Adventures. Here we go. So, what we're going to be doing for stuffing, you want wet things for stuffing. You don't want dry things like bread because roasting a turkey is all about. Equilibrium. Let me grab my uh, hair tie real quick. About real life. You go outside, Luna. Okay, found a hair tie. Oh yeah, I've got one around my bicep. Hold on, go outside. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so like I said, it's roasting and brining a turkey is about the equilibrium. You don't want you want your turkey to be thaw and the water in the turkey to come out of the turkey while you're brining it and equalize with your brining solution so the salt goes into the, the um, yeah, like my, my makeshift belt here for my pants so they don't fall down, it's from my robe. Uh, <laughs> um, <coughs> again, I don't have paper towels, so I'm just gonna have to do a towel underneath it. That's not, this is clean one, that's right. No, it's not, because I just dried the turkey off. I gotta wash my hands. 
cutting board. Michelle, would you do me a favor and bring me a clean towel? Yeah. Ah, uh, hand towel's fine. And if it ends up being a big one, no big deal. Yep. stuffing itself doesn't actually matter as far as eating it because the stuffing is not in the bird itself is it should not be for eating it's it's there to help the meat itself of the bird be more flavorful and more moist so uh, you know, the idea of a bread type stuffing helping maintain moisture is kind of absurd because it's just going to soak it up. It acts like a sponge, you know. You put something in there that's already soaked, uh, yeah, and, and bread mixture with like soaked with egg or whatever, you're just, that's just bacteria heaven, uh, especially if you don't cook the turkey long enough. I'm not saying it can't be done to, uh, to, to stuff a turkey with bread. Clearly we've been doing it a long time. But fruit and aromatics is really where the better option is. You know, I read somewhere you want to peel and core these apples. It's silly. I'll core them just to keep seeds from ending up inside the bird. But peeling them is a little silly. The peels have a lot of flavor and, again, aromatic. The cores are just messy and they do separate and end up inside the bird or end up in a, in a mouthful of meat. I'm not going to hurt too bad. I probably went overkill and bought too many apples, but that's okay. So you want to quarter or chop up your, uh, uh, your aromatics and not in huge, you don't want tiny chunks, leave them big, because you want these to come out fairly whole, so you just got your turkey. But I quartered an onion. And I quartered so far one apple. I'm gonna do alternating as I stuff this cavity an onion quarter and an apple quarter, at least at first. I'm only doing one onion because, especially these white onions, whoo, buddy, they are potent. My eyes are watering just being over them. You look an all spice berry. Um, again, I'm touching the turkey at this point. So anytime I put my hands on the turkey, and then to another utensil or another type of food, you want to wash them. Now granted, I'm not doing it between each piece like this because it's all, you know, it's it's one, uh, one action, it's all going to the same place. So there's no real cross-contamination because this knife is still touching the fruit that is going to be touching the raw turkey anyway. So nothing here is not, uh, going to touch the raw turkey eventually or get washed before it touches something else. Sink a little bit so I can get ready to wash my hands. Hot water going. I'm really just filling up this cavity with apples and onions as best I can. The onions will kind of separate because they're in the layers. Layers don't care. Um, and then as you get closer and closer to the mouth of the turkey, let's see if we can rotate the camera so you can see. Woo, let's knock over the tripod, shall we, Bard? You can see what I'm actually doing here. And you're literally just stuffing this cavity full, full as you can get it. 
smaller chunks would mean it'd be easier to fill the cavity more completely, but that's not really super important. It's just making sure that you've got it filled with something. Uh, and you can roast it without filling the cavity, as a matter of fact, I did see that. So we've got all of our fruits and veggies. Veggies, you need a few aromatics. Uh, before I reach into my spice cabinet, I'm gonna wash my hands really, really well here. Lots of hot water and soap. You wanna make sure no cross-contamination, uh, uh, foodborne illnesses and um, the sickness you can get. I can't, the name escapes me right now. Botulism, I think. No, that's something else. But from cooking, from eating undercooked poultry is just, it's, it's not a joke. You don't want to mess with it. Okay. Uh, and now, yeah, that's right. We want, I have one like half a cinnamon stick in this bottle. Uh, I love these glass bottles, so I'm going to keep in that. Cinnamon sticks. And I have to sanitize the outside of these now because my hands are. Oh, my left hand is the only one. Da, da, da. Come on. Why do you put a shaker top on the top of. <sighs> whole cinnamon stick. What, what? Why do this? It's whole cinnamon sticks. Particularly difficult to break too. It's wonderful. So I don't want to do too many because I don't want to overload it. So I'm going to stick with three whole cinnamon sticks, three and a half, with that little half one I stuck in there. It might be too much. Let's just do two and a half. One for kind of each side. One way, way deep in there. Get it in all nice and deep black. So that's pretty much it. Like you got this thing patted dry, you got it stuffed, you got your oven preheated to 500. Now what you're gonna do is just rub this down with a little bit of canola oil, add a little bit of water to the bottom, uh, vegetable stock if you still have some left over, a little bit of water to the bottom and stick it in the oven. Uh, according to the Alton Brown uh, recipe, which I'm using, this will be in the oven at 500 degrees for about 30 minutes and give the turkey a nice golden brown kind of look to it. And then we're gonna crank the temperature down to 350, insert the probe thermometer into the deepest part of the breast. So more than likely to do that, that's what this is by the way. Uh, to do that, more than likely what I'll do is go in right in here underneath this part of the breast so that way you don't mess up this nice skin which already came with a couple of nicks, but that's okay. Um, and you want to get it right underneath here and into the depth of the meat. I'm going to double check on Google the best way to stick a, a probe thermometer. Uh, but you probe it, you do the probe after the 500, set your alarm for 160 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, thank you, Harley. And, uh, then wait. It's going to be about four and a half hours till this turkey is done. And yeah. So 30 minutes, 500, crank it down to 350, insert the probe, set your alarm for 160, and wait. When it hits 160, you take it out, let it rest for another 30 minutes. It will hit the required 165 internally that poultry needs to be, and you'll have yourself a nicely cooked bird. Um, another thing you might want to do if you've got the room for it is you can tuck the wings back on themselves. I'm not going to bother with it because this is a really tiny pan and it's not very strong. Now, it even says on the pan, support it from the bottom, especially when you got liquid in it. Because <clears throat> these pans are not meant to hold and support alone that little of liquid. So as a matter of fact, I'm going to set this on a cookie sheet. Hope to God that that doesn't change how the cooking temperature works. Where's my cookie sheet? Dishwasher. Nice and clean in the dishwasher. So, 
always support your pan from the bottom. It says it right on the package. It says it stamped into the bottom of this pan. I shit you not. Okay, and now I'll grab a measuring cup or a, I guess a glass because the measuring cup is gone. Maybe one cup of water. You can kind of see it's not even forming really around the turkey. So, you know what? Kind of equalize. Do two cups of water. That'll cook out really fast. Probably too much water. We'll see. Everything's a learning experience. Yeah, as a matter of fact, but it just looks like too much. Let me dump some out. This corner here. Out of there, water. Lose a half cup of that. So a cup and a half of water. Wash your fingers and you set it down on the bottommost rack of your oven. 500. Make sure you got the, the rack moved before you turn it on. I've made that mistake before. All right, now, it's in the oven. Start the timer for 30 minutes. Start. Now, i do one more thing. i wash my hands real well. After, after washing my hands anyway. This is why cooking shows are very rarely live without commercial breaks to wash hands and shit. Anyway, um, one last thing we need to do is make a breastplate. Fresh clean towel that has no no turkey on it at all. Right here. Okay. Don't worry too much about the breastplate thing. No no serious blacksmithing required. Just gonna do this with some aluminum foil. You want us to make it a double thickness. In other words, we're gonna fold this bad boy in half. Utilizing your foil for things, you want shiny side out. I'm going to fold the edges over just like a half inch a little bit because it helps keep it rigid in this shape. So we got both of those edges. <clears throat> so, I don't want to open the oven just yet because we're not gonna we're not gonna utilize this thing anyway. But I'm not sure if I'm gonna be using this vertically along the, the breastbone of the turkey like this, or if I'm gonna be folding it over the breastbone of the turkey like that. So we'll see. Um, I can always make a bigger one or another one uh, to augment. That's to basically if it starts, if your turkey starts getting too brown during the process of the, uh, the first part of the roast. And that does it. That is, that's literally all it takes to do Thanksgiving. Um, you get your turkey brined ahead of time. Even if you didn't brine your turkey. I forgot to do the canola boil. <laughs> Luckily that's a really quick fix. Um, and I can kneel here in front of the, do this, how hot is our turkey? Not very yet, okay, cool. So, let me get a small cup. That way I'm not burning myself here. Do 
do not recommend that you do this. Really, really don't. Working on your turkey while it's in the oven. But the, the part that I skipped, forgot to tell you about, you want to rub down, dripped a little bit on the outside there, you can hear it. Rub down your turkey with canola oil. There we go. Didn't take a whole lot. Now I have a turkey oily hand. <laughs> All right, so I was able to remember to do that, thank goodness, before the turkey got too hot. Otherwise, we were gonna have a not as pleasant skin. Skin was not gonna be ni that nice, crackly, fried, essentially, skin that it becomes from being, uh, getting oil on it. So, oops. Adventurers, make sure you oil your turkey before you uh, put it in the oven. Oil your turkey after it's in the pan, though. Trust me on that one, um, because you don't want to you don't want to deal with trying to move an oiled up an oiled up turkey. I promise you that. <laughs> um, okay, so we've got our turkey in the oven. Let me turn on the oven light so I can keep an eye on it. We're gonna keep that oven closed for half an hour. I've got 25 more minutes now. I was only in there for five minutes before I remembered our oil. And we're gonna put the cap. Well, you guys don't need to be around while I find the cap. Join me again uh, later on when I go to take the turkey out of the oven. Uh, it'll probably be in about four and a half hours, would be my guess, but we'll see what the turkey timer says. Follow me on Twitter. Twitter is it's at the Rambling Bard. Pretty much any social media platform you can find. I am the Rambling Bard. All one word, no spaces, no extra characters. Um, and I have a shop on Etsy. Shop uh, uh, Etsy.com slash shop slash Bard's Bounty. Um, and uh, I also have a Patreon. That's probably the most important thing that I should mention. Uh, I am the Rambling Bard. My name is Gregory Odinson, and I do this as well as many, many other things. I am a jack of all trades. And if you like watching crafting, if you like the idea of like uh, basically PBS, but you can cuss, uh, come subscribe to my YouTube channel as well as uh, watch my Patreon. You don't even have to pay anything to follow because I do put up public content all the time. I want my content to be public, uh, but by pledging, you get extra things and you're helping me do this full time and make this my full time job, which is honestly my dream. So if you like uh, folk music, you like uh, music covers, you like acting, you like crafting, you like D&D, you like video games, retro and new, and you like cooking, and you like cussing, and you like being in a safe space, the Rambling Bar channel is for you. <laughs> Remember, adventurers, choose love, and uh, happy turkey day, and um, remember to um, love your friends and family because life is short. Life is very, very, very short. <laughs>